Welcome back to Don's Life, welcome to the channel, thanks for joining today. You know with all these lights, the mods and accessories that I have on my truck, I'm always on the lookout for a good set of switches, but nothing integrates as well as the ones made by the manufacturer. That's right, today we're going to install the GM Auxiliary Upfitter switches on the GMC Sierra AT4. Let's go. Today's video is sponsored by 404parts.com. They've become a great partner for the channel. 404parts.com offers genuine OEM accessories, including upfitter switches, which we're gonna install on this vehicle today. Make sure to check out their website, 404parts.com, and when you find something, use the promo code DAWN404 and save yourself 5%. Let's take a closer look at today's parts. So first off, we have our replacement knee bolster. So instead of cutting a hole in the dash, this automatically comes with the five switches already integrated nicely here. And then we'll transfer the park brake switch over here and the ignition start stop switch over there. But if you look closely at this panel, the answers are already to the test of what we're gonna to need to do today. You end up having holes that are going to be concealed where screws are gonna be that we need to be able to get out. So we're gonna to have to remove the panel above, below and beside this just to get it out today. So that's gonna be the tedious part. Then we have our fuse panel. So in here you have all your fuses and relays for the new switches. So that's gonna be mounted underneath the dash on the inside of the vehicle. These plugs are going to hook up here as well as into the wiring that exists in the truck already. And then the really fun part, we have to fish this through the firewall all the way to the battery where it's gonna be connected with various fuses and new terminal clamps here. And then we have some zip ties and some finishing clips just to make it all look OEM because it is an OEM product. So I printed off some documentation, a quick search on the internet. If you just put in the uh, upfitter switches for the year of your vehicle, you'll find this document here. This is for a technician. So a professional technician should be installing this. It even says somewhere in here in the fine print, it's not really for a DIY project type person. I feel confident I can put it in no problem, but I just wanted to put that disclaimer there. This should be installed by a professional. If you do it yourself, it's at your own risk, but I'll still go through all the steps and you'll watch me complete it from start to finish. Now we should be able to get through this relatively unscathed. I might get some scrapes and stuff on my fingers from prying panels apart because there's gonna be a lot of clips coming apart in this video. But other than that, everything has its spot, including the top of the battery for the cable management. So first things first, let's start taking apart the interior. So remember the first thing is we need to figure out which panels to remove that are going to be surrounding the new knee bolster. So we have a panel on the top, on the left, on the right, and down below. So if we look in here, to the right of it, we're gonna have to take this off, we're gonna have to take this off, we're gonna have to take this top piece off, we're gonna have to take this top piece off only because we need to take this piece off, which is under it. Then we're gonna have to take the infotainment surround off and we're gonna have to take part of the console apart down there. So we might as well get started over here and work our way that way. Sorry for the lighting, but this is how far we are. So we took off the side panel, we unscrewed this, pulled it down. We came over to this side and we took the sides of the console off just so we could get that little tiny trim piece that's under the infotainment area. That gave us access to the screws surrounding the infotainment area. Then we pulled it all forward. Now we pulled this bezel forward and now we have 
almost full access to the knee bolster. We just have to finish by taking off these screws here, which will give us access to the screws holding the top of the knee bolster in. And then we should be able to swap it out. Okay, we've got everything loosened that we needed. You could take all of these elements out. We could have taken the cup holders out completely and set them aside. We could have unplugged the infotainment, set them aside. But really, we just needed to back everything off so we can get to all of the screws to pull this off. So I'm gonna do that next. And you probably noticed I have my old switch here that was double-sided taped right there. I'll still be using it for a while, but I just might have to relocate it up a little bit because the new switches are gonna be in this location but nothing wrong with lots of extra switches. And these ones will look a lot nicer. Now remember the new panel has all the answers to the test. So all we have to do is look at where the screw holes will be on here. So there's gonna be one at the bottom there. There's going to be one up here, one right there, one right there, one right there, and that's it. Okay, we got the bolster down now. It's being held up by the parking brake cable, the ignition cable, and the hood release cable. So we're just gonna use this pick tool, remove those, then we should be able to take it out and switch over all the components. All right, we have the old one and the new one. We just have to transfer this switch and that switch over to here, should be pretty simple. I think the ignition's really easy. It's just a matter of pinching the sides here and that pops out like that. And then we simply clip it back in there. So that's done, we're almost there, that easy. This is a little trickier. You have to pinch the sides. There's one, two, three, four little things to press down and pull out at the same time. So I'm just gonna grab a little screwdriver and I'll use my pick tool and we should be able to get it out. That was fairly easy, but it's really hard not to crack these. I put a crack in this one right there, but it's still functional. It happens, what do you do? So the first casualty of the install is a little bit of a crack in the old panel that we probably won't use for anything. So before I install the new panel, I just wanted to show you a few things on the fuse block here because once I've mounted in the vehicle, it's gonna be kind of up underneath the dash and it's gonna be kind of hard to show you. So let's take a closer look. It's gonna be mounted under the dash with everything kind of facing this way. So you're gonna be able to unclip it like that to gain access to your fuses. Now, if you look in here, it's pretty straightforward. We have five switches, we have five fuses. We have three 25 amp, two 20s. And then we have the three relays for the larger current. And then we have two relays for the lower current. And then this right here, this is very critical. So right now, if I hook this all up, the switches are gonna be running off battery power, whether the ignition is turned on or off. If I want switch one and two to be on ignition power, I just move it to this location there. Now when I turn on the ignition, this will only let switch one and two work when the ignition's on, but three and four will still be on battery. So if we go back, now they're all on battery. So you just move these to either location to get switch one and two, or three and four on battery or ignition. So you probably notice I didn't talk about switch five, that's because switch five is already dedicated to a factory beacon light that would go on the roof. We don't have that option. You can cut that wire, it's part of this harness here. We have our four wires for our four switches. The fifth wire would be this green one. So we could cut that or pull the pin out and then we could use it for a fifth accessory if we decided to, but we're just gonna leave it with the access to the four switches right now. That's why we only have the ability to change the power for two switches here and two switches there. Now, before we get too far and put that knee bolster in, I'm gonna run the wire that needs to go through the firewall. So it needs to be this end here. It's going to pass through. You can see based on the sheathing, it's got a predetermined length on it already. It's gotta go through where that black wire is already 
going through for my old switch. We're gonna have to cut that opening up a little more and then push the wire through. Now, before we put the bolster all the way up and clip everything in, make sure you hang the fuse box. It's gonna go right here. You wanna make sure your fuse access is pointing down. You can see it's already ready for the screws that come with it. And there's two holes already here. So we just gotta line them up and then put these screws in. So before we mount this all the way and plug in all the wires, this new box has this harness, which needs to come up through this hole right here. So I don't know if you can see that that well, but right here, I gotta pass it up through there. And then it's gonna clip in to the back of the switch right beside the parking brake. Okay, if we did it all properly, when I open the door, it should come on with all the other dash lights, illuminate. You should be able to push the buttons and they'll light up as well, but we haven't run the power to them to make all the switches live for connecting different devices. So let's see if it's wired up properly first. Yep, there we go. See, they're lit up and I can turn them all on, but we don't have power to the battery yet. We only have power to the switches themselves. So once we get power to the battery, then the fuse panel will be live. And then if we connect any accessories, they'll all work. So because we've had the wire through already, through the firewall, now we have these eyelets on the wiring harness that are going to connect to these push pins all the way down. They've given us extra in case we break any. I just have to connect these to there and get this all the way to the battery. And then I'll show you how to wire it up. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we got this secured along the firewall area. I have the terminal here that's gonna need to mount in the battery, but just so I don't confuse you with what you're about to see, I'm going to disconnect some of the other accessories that I have in here. I have this SeaTech quick charger right here. See it's showing orange because it's not showing the battery at a full state. So I'm just gonna get that out of the way, unhook a couple of the other accessories just for a moment. So then that way, when you see me configure this area, you know it's exactly how it needs to be for the upfitter switches. So I'm gonna make this a little clearer. If you put all of the terminals in first, I'll show you the order to connect everything. So let's start with this 60 amp fuse. We're going to bridge it right there. And then you get this little plate. That's gonna nestle in on top and give a nice point of contact for this cable here, which is for our upfitter switches. So that's ready. Then we're going to take our 200. This would be great for a snow plow. We're not gonna be connecting a snow plow, but it is there if we ever need it, or we can run another device to this terminal here, and it'll be fused up to 200, which is pretty high. Now we just have to take the bus bar, because this is a live plate. It's gonna conduct electricity all the way through this side now. And then our breaker points are here with these fuses. So this to the upfitter switches, 
and then this for anything we want to add down the road. It just comes part of this kit. Now we can secure all of this down. And then for all intents and purposes, we're pretty much done. Let's test all the switches using a test light, make sure they all work. Blue should be switch one. I'll show you it's not live yet because the switch is off. So just kind of hold that there, turn the switch on. There we go, we're lit up. Now we'll turn it off. Gray should be switch two. We'll do the same thing. There we go, now we'll turn it off. Brown is switch three. There we go. And then yellow should be switch four. Ta-da, we're good. Well, there we go. Now I just have to decide what I'm gonna connect to it. But with my projects, I do not think that'll be an issue. I wanted to thank 404parts.com for sponsoring today's video. Again, make sure you check out their website. You can get a ton of great things to accessorize your vehicle. They're all genuine OEM accessories made to fit your vehicle properly. You can get an illuminated badge for your GMC. You can get some GMC puddle lamps like I have for my truck. You can get the Cadillac Escalade versions if you want. We have the blacked out emblems on the Cadillac Escalade, but you could also get yourself an exhaust or maybe you want to upgrade your brakes. There's so much on there to choose from. And even cooler, I'll leave a link to a dedicated Dawn's Life promotional bundle page here at 404parts.com. But if you want to get the upfitter switches shown in today's video, put in the promo code Dawn404, save yourself 5%. Anyway, I wanted to thank you for watching today's video. If you liked it, hit that like button. Please consider subscribing. We'll talk to you next time.